G'day. Let's start today with a very boring party trick. Okay, at some event, get out a large piece of paper, stick it to the wall, or use a whiteboard or something, and at the top of the page, write some letters of the alphabet. I just wrote A, B, and C, the first three. And at the bottom of the page, list all the possible sets you can make out of the letters you wrote at the top. For example, you might want to have the set that has none of the letters in it, the empty set. And you want the set with just the letter A in it. And you want the set with just the letter B. And you want the set with the letter B and C. You want the set with all three letters in it, and so on and so on. If you do a lot of letters at the top, you'll be here for a very long time listing all the possible subsets. So keep the letters at the top pretty small. Okay, now hand a marker to an audience member and say, I'm going to perform a fabulous mind reading trick with you. And turn your back to the board so you're not going to see anything goes on. But instruct your audience member to do the following. Please draw a leash from the very first letter A to any of the sets below. So A, they might want to leash it to the set, I don't know, AC or something. Okay. Then ask them to leash the letter B, the next letter, to some subset below. All right, they might leash B, I don't know, in this case, to the empty set. And then leash C to some set to the, uh, below. So they might say, oh, leash C, I don't know, to A. Great. When they're done, now ask them three questions. You're going to hear the answers, but you're not going to see anything that's going on behind them. Here's the first question you ask. Is the letter A in the subset to which it's leashed? So the audience member has to look and say, A, is it in that set there, AC? The answer is yes. Yes to that first question. Is B in the subset to which it's leashed? Is B in the empty set? Well, nothing's in the empty set. No, B's not in there. The answer's no. And the third question is going to be, is C in the subset to which it's leashed? Uh, C, is it in that set there? No. Again, no. All right, so you've asked three questions, one for each letter of the alphabet at the top of the page. Grand. And now comes the magic moment. You're going to announce to the world a subset that's not leashed. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to take all the no answers and write what letters gave you the no answers. Say B and C. In this case, they gave you no's. And then announce to your to at the party, I bet the set B, C is unleashed. And then we'll look at the page magically and, and, and furiously and say, oh my goodness, look at that. There is no leash to B, C. Rounds of applause, magic, wonder, delight, awe. No, no. Okay, but, but here's the thing. That's the idea. If you create the set with all the no answers, it's sure to be unleashed. So it's not a very exciting, power, uh, like very exciting uh, party trick, but it is actually an interesting puzzle. Why would all the no answers correspond to an unleashed set? And to be very clear, just practice this, if someone said all no's, no, 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 you would then choose the set. A had a no answer, B had a no answer, C had a no answer. You say A, B, C would be unleashed. Or if they said yes, 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 this was the interesting one, there are no no answers, in which case you would say the empty set is unleashed. So there's our puzzle for this video. Why do all the no answers to these questions correspond to a set that's actually sure to be unleashed? Hmm, that's actually kind of curious. Okay, let's explain the puzzle. Let's call the set of all the letters that gave a no answer, let's call that set U. U is the set of all letters that answered no to this question. Are you in the set to which you are leashed? B is not in the set to which it's leashed, B is in U. C is not in the set to which it's leashed, C is in U. A is in the set to which it's leashed, A is not in U. So right now for this particular setup of the party game, the set U is indeed the set BC. And another diagram like this, there'll be another set U, and so on and so on. Every possible instance of this party game will create a set U like this. So somewhere down here, there's sure to be a set U. For us right now, it happens to be BC. And the claim is that set U is unleashed. That is, there's no letter up here, let's call it P for now, which is leashed to U. What we're seeing right there, we're claiming is not going to happen. U has to be unleashed. So the question is, why must U be unleashed? All right, okay, all right, so let's see if we can explain why you must be unleashed, why what we're seeing right now can't happen. So let's be a little bit contrary and see, let's examine, let's really probe, if this is happening, what goes wrong? If there really is a letter P that's leashed to you, something must be wrong. And the way to get at what's wrong is to ask this question, assuming we're in the setup. Ask, is P in you? That's a simple yes, no question. Either the answer is yes, P is in you, or no, P is not in you. Right, let's go through each of those two cases very, very clear, carefully. So assuming we're in the situation where U is actually leashed to some letter, 
if the answer to this question is yes, if P is in U, what does that mean? Yes, P is in U. That means P has no business being in this particular set. Because if it's in U, it satisfies the definition of being in the set, which is it's not in the set to which it's leashed. Whoa, whoa, that's brain hurdy. If P is in the set to which it's leashed, then it must satisfy the definition of being in the set to which it's leashed. And that definition is, it's not in the set to which it's leashed. Whoa, this makes no logical sense. That leads to a contradiction that can't be happening. All right, all right, that hurts your brain right there. All right, other option, is P in U? Maybe the answer is no. Well, the answer is no to are you in the set to which you're leashed, then it satisfies the definition of being in U. Whoa. If, the, if P is not in the set to which it's leashed, that is the answer to this question right here is no, then it fits the definition of being in U and therefore must be in U. Hang on, hang on, it is in U. And it's not in U, another contradiction. Brain hurts, brain hurts, that can't happen either. So asking this question about P, assuming there is a leash pattern like this, shows whatever's going on, everything is impossible, this cannot be happening. The, ca the whole premise here is wrong. The set U just simply cannot be U leashed. So this means in every instance of the party game, you can always construct a set, a set U, namely this one over here will do, which has to, by pure logic, be unleashed. Whoa. Now what I love about this, we can actually try to play this party game, not with just a finite set of three letters or four letters or seven letters, we can try playing this party game too with a set of infinitely many letters. So let's do that. Do you know what? We really can imagine playing this game with an infinite set written at the top of the page and the set of all sets you can make from that infinite set up there. This is purely a mind game now, because you can't even write out all the numbers you're thinking about now, but you can still think about them. For example, here's the set of all the counting numbers, all the natural numbers. Uh, mathematicians denote that set with a capital N, like blackboard bold N, double stroke N. Okay, this is the set of all counting numbers. And here I started trying to list all the sets you can make of counting numbers. The empty set, all the sets contain just one of the counting numbers, all the sets contain just a finite number of them, and all the sets contain infinite number of counting numbers, like all the primes, all the evens, or some just random thing. All right, all right. And the same argument. You can imagine in your mind's eye trying to draw a leashing pattern from each uh, number at the top to some subset down below. So imagine I could try to leash like this, who knows what I'm doing, all the way along. Uh, truly a mind game, because I have to meant to go all the way along. But we can still argue, even such a thing existed all the way through, there's definitely still going to be a set down here, unleashed, and it's going to be that set U. You can always create a set U down here that has to remain unleashed. Which tells me, which tells me, this power set, the set of all sets from a given set, is fundamentally bigger than the beginning set you started with. Now we saw that in the finite case. I started with three letters, A, B, and C, and the power set was eight subsets. That was definitely bigger. But I could argue the same thing is happening here in the sense of leashing. This infinite set here is actually a bigger infinity than that infinite set there. That is, if I've got all the counting numbers and the natural numbers, that's actually a small infinity than the set of all sets of, of counting numbers. Whoa, there's two types of infinity. But here's the thing, you can keep going. I could then not just take the set of all the counting numbers and produce this, I can now take the set of all sets of this. Whoa, all the sets of the sets of the counting numbers. The sets of the sets of the counting numbers. And by the same argument, that will be a bigger infinity still. Whoa, and then I can start taking all the sets of the sets of the sets of the counting numbers. And by the same argument, that have to be an even bigger infinity, and I can keep doing this forever. This little boring party trick is phenomenal. It's showing me essentially that actually there are infinitely many infinities. And I can't get my mind around basically any of them. They're really crazy. How, what are these infinities? In fact, have we got them all? Is there an infinity between even just the first two? Have we skipped over some infinity right there? Whoa. So this, this boring, boring party trick is absolutely far from boring. Its consequences are beautiful and profound. We've now got a whole infinite hierarchy of infinities that I can try to think about and make sense of. 
and they beget even more questions. Are there more infinities still? Things in between. This is what I love about mathematics. Simple ideas can unravel to profound, mind-blowing, awe-inspiring ideas. Welcome to the world of infinities.